Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of On The Mark. I'm your host, Mark Brantley, Premier of Nevis, and I'm here with you, God willing, for the next two hours of Primetime Talk Radio. Good evening to all the beautiful people here on the island of Nevis, those in St. Kitts, those who are listening throughout the Caribbean region, those in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and wherever else you may be. It is a beautiful night here on the island of Nevis, Queen City Nevis, the Queen of the Caribbean, and I'm delighted to be here. It is a good time for us to be alive and to be well and to give God thanks that we are alive and well. Not everyone who was here with us yesterday is here today. And it brings me to a sad note. I want to express my very deep condolences on the passing of my dear friend Everton Rogers, who was a police officer of long standing, a stalwart in the Bath Village community, and someone that we all knew. He was somebody who I had an excellent relationship with over the years, someone who always gave in his own style good advice. He was somebody who was unflappable, not given to outbursts, quiet individual. I sat with him about a month ago or thereabouts in Bath, and we had a good conversation. He did say to me that he was experiencing some difficulties, but as always, he said he would be all right. Yesterday, I was at the Alexandra Hospital, and I was quite surprised that he was there. I didn't go there to see him. I went there to see someone else. But, of course, when you're there, you visit all the wards, and he was on one of the wards and clearly was in some distress. And so we got the sad news that he passed yesterday. And so I just want to say my condolences, extend my deepest condolences to his family, to all of his children, and those that survive him, to the entire Bath community, to the policing community, and to all who knew him, who loved him, and to whom he was a friend. And so I extend those condolences and to the family of Everton Rogers and to the family of families of all those who dearly departed. I am to hope and pray that all of our prayers will sustain you in your hour of bereavement and that you may be comforted knowing that others are thinking about you. I had to start the show on that sad note because oftentimes we get so preoccupied with day-to-day -day life, the rigors, the struggles, the relationships or lack thereof. We get at each other, we curse and abuse and uh, find fault with each other. We criticize and we, some of us spend a lot of time trying to bring down people. And at the end of the day, what is life? The Bible tells us it is but a vapor. And all of us know what a vapor is. It is something that is gone in an instant. And yesterday, I saw Rogers. Today, he's no more. And so I extend condolences to his family, but use that as a basis to tell us that we should really try to live better with each other. We should try to love our families, love our neighbors, love those around us. And we will be a better community as a result. And so I start with that sad note. And uh, I now move on with the rest of the show. I have quite a bit of information to impart by way of updates. And please forgive me, I'm having a bit of a, I don't know what it is quite frankly, but I'm a little stuffy. I hope it is nothing more than maybe some sinuses. So if I sound a little out of sorts, please forgive me. But I want to say that tomorrow at 10 a.m. I will have my monthly press conference. And I'm asking one and all to tune in. It is carried live here on Vaughn Radio, but it is also carried live on various social media platforms like YouTube and Facebook on the NTV, the Nevis Television Channel. Um, it is carried live, and I'm inviting you to tune in. The monthly press conference was an initiative that we started back in 2017 when I became Premier of Nevis, and I thought it was yet another opportunity to engage with the public, but this time to engage directly through the press and to have the press ask the questions that they needed to ask and for me to respond. It is something that we have kept to, and every single month we have sought our very best to have at least one press conference for that month. Uh, we have very rarely missed it, and I've made sure that no travel or other commitments would um, interfere with that. And so we have it tomorrow, which is the 29th day of February. This is a leap year this year. And so we're having it on the last day of this month, February. And then we're hopeful that you will tune in and that the press will come in their numbers, those from St. Kitts, those from Nevis, and ask their questions. I realize there are a number of hot button topics, and so we hope to address those. Some tomorrow, I'm pretty sure that we'll address some tonight as well. So I invite one and all to the Premier's press conference. And then this weekend, starting on Saturday, 
we have the benefit of the acting master class that is going to start. I would want to extend again my warm regards and thanks to Miss Juliet Jeffers, a renowned actress of Nivision descent and heritage. And she kindly consented to give back. I want to thank our partners in the Four Seasons Resort and Billy Cueto and his team there. I'm going to get to them in a little while, but I want to thank them for partnering with us in a very deliberate way to make this happen and uh, to thank all of those who have organized and been involved in this very important initiative. This is an initiative that we jumped on board. Uh, Juliet offered her services. She has appeared in many films and uh, uh, has uh, really had uh, quite a career in terms of acting, whether in movies or in television, and so we certainly look forward to that. I also am not yet at liberty to say uh, everything, but I'm also pleased to report that Nevis has landed a significant uh, photo shoot deal where a major um, clothing label is coming to Nevis to shoot for their catalog. And I think I'm very pleased again. I want to certainly commend the excellent work that is being done uh, through the Nevis Investment Promotion Agency uh, to attract and to, to get such interest uh, in the island and also through our Nevis uh, Tourism Authority. I think uh, excellent work is being done and I want to commend them publicly. Let me also commend the Nevis Tourism Authority. They have partnered with uh, a jewelry store at the Four Seasons and uh, called Elegance, I think, Lelegance, Legance, something like that. I'm, I'm really a thing. But my friend Rohan Kotai, let me use his name. Um, and uh, they have created two Pandora charms for the island of Nevis. Uh, one has the flag of St. Kitts and Nevis, and the other has uh, a rendering of Nevis Peak with Nevis Nice. And I'm told they're flying off the shelves already. It is a really an amazing initiative just in time for Culture Armor 50 and I wish them all the best. But this is, again, out-of-the-box innovative thinking by the Nevis Tourism Authority trying to find partners to do interesting things to promote Nevis. So imagine now when you come on vacation, you can leave with your Pandora charm, which says Nevis. And I would hope that it becomes a bestseller and that every tourist who comes and every local and every person who comes home for culture arm and leaves that they take one with them our colleagues and friends in sink it's as well our brothers and sisters we invite you get that charm especially the one with the flag of sink it's in nevis but this was an initiative a partnership with the nta and i'm very pleased that the out of the box thinking that we are seeing as we try to promote this beautiful island of ours this land that we love now i said i would say a bit about four seasons four seasons just celebrated 33 years of being on this island. I believe that without a doubt, perhaps only the creation of the Nevis Island Administration was a greater initiative in the last 40 years than the Four Seasons. We have had a lot of initiatives. We've had Bank of Nevis. We've had uh, various entities that have started. We've had Van Sam International Airport and its expansion. We've done a lot on this island. I won't get into all that we've done. But I think we can all agree that the Four Seasons Resort and its coming here 33 years ago was far and away the largest investment, single investment, and the largest platform that we've had for economic advancement on the island. And they have continued to contribute over those years. They gave that injection. Somebody told me the other day that when Four Seasons came, Nevision got a pity. And I think sometimes we take things for granted. And many of us forget how things were prior to the time when Four Seasons would have come. When at that time, our major export was people. Because people were fleeing Nevis. Things were hard. Fleeing to St. Kitts fleeing to St. Thomas and St. Croix and St. John, fleeing to Tortola and Anigada and Virgin Garda, fleeing to Puerto Rico, fleeing to America, the United States, the mainland, mostly to New York, fleeing to Canada, fleeing to the United Kingdom. We were fleeing everywhere. And look at us now that through the Four Seasons and other engagements and through governments investing, we have created now the environment on this island where people are fleeing into Nevis. Isn't that interesting? That instead of our people fleeing out, people are now 
flocking in and looking for work and looking for opportunity. I think it speaks volumes to how well we have done. But I want to speak specifically to the Four Seasons. The Four Seasons would have come, of course, during the time of our national hero, the late, great Sir Simeon Daniel. And I think it was one of his signal achievements to bring that resort here during his tenure. The development of the Four Seasons and the build-out, particularly of the villas, that would have happened under the CCM-led Van Samry administration. And so it shows how one administration into another, but the development of the island continues. Now, Four Seasons, 33 years ago, they're still here. They're still contributing. And one of the things that I, certainly as Premier, have insisted on is that every opportunity be afforded to our local people, that they be afforded a chance to grow and develop, and certainly that our local divisions be given an opportunity there. It has been slow in parts. Many say after 33 years, the entire management structure at Four Seasons should be our local people. But Rome, they say, was not built in a day. And we understand that it is a work in progress. But I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing. And I just wanted to share tonight some news and to say some congratulations. The first person is Vincia Jeffers. I saw Vincia down at the hotel. Vincia tell me, Mr. Brandt, you know, I don't like the, 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 the set of noise and the, 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 you know, all the, the sound around me. But I wanted to mention Vincia because Vincia has just been promoted to housekeeping manager. And it says that she has been promoted to that position. She joined the Four Seasons in November 2010. So she's been there now. This will be her 14th year as a front office receptionist. And the hotel had the opportunity to see Vincia grow in the department and become a fundamental piece of its success. She moved to the rooms division, to the housekeeping department, and she is now the housekeeping manager. Fun fact, she says her pride and joy is her daughter. If you see Vincia anywhere, tell her I say congratulations and give her your own share of congratulations. The new housekeeping manager for seasons, our own Vincia Jeffers. But it doesn't stop there. Let me also congratulate Jamoy Fudd Tyson. Everybody knows him. Everybody talks, you know, some people say they have a six-pack. He have a 14-pack. Jamoy Fudd Tyson has been promoted from assistant lands manager to lands manager. Effective last year, December 2023. But I'm getting the news now, so I'm sharing it. So congratulations to Jamoy, known to many as Fudd. He is a sports person, a cricketer, well-known fellow around Nevis, very popular young man, and I want to congratulate him. He's a hard worker, and he has moved up steadily to the point now where he is the lands manager at the Four Seasons Resort. Let me also take some time to congratulate Amal Lake. Amal Lake has been promoted from Engineer 3 to Engineer 2, effective January 31st. Haile Nisbet, Promoted from Engineer 2 to Engineer 1, effective January 31st. And big news, Dion Lake. Dion Lake has been promoted from Assistant Chief Engineer to the Chief Engineer. And I think that that is significant, that Dion will now head up the engineering department. The announcement came out. He embarked on his journey with Four Seasons back in 2005. So he's been there this year for 19 years, initially joining as duty engineer. Over the years, he has demonstrated remarkable growth, accumulating a wealth of knowledge, spanning all facets of the engineering department and the resort as a whole. His dedication and outstanding performance have been evident, and he takes on various challenging projects. His willingness to take on extra responsibilities and his unwavering commitment have earned him the respect of his team, fellow managers, and colleagues. Dion is a family man, and when not at work, he loves spending time with his lovely wife and beautiful daughters. Dion Lake, the new chief engineer at the Four Seasons. And Dion, if you're listening, incidentally, your family in the UK, Lisa and the entire team, have asked me to extend congratulations to you. We are all very, very proud of you. 
And then the last one that I have to speak to is, of course, the beautiful Kimisha Tewitt. Kimisha Tewitt has been promoted to the position of restaurant supervisor at the Four Seasons. She started the Four Seasons career in 2019, so she's a fairly newcomer to the hotel. And she started as a server, a position which she has held until now her promotion to supervisor. Like so many other staff, she had left, she left due to COVID, but returned in November 2021 with the same level of energy and enthusiasm towards her work. She enjoys reading, cooking, spending time with family, and attending church. She also loves planning events, traveling, and learning new things and adventures. So, the beautiful Kamisha Tewitt, we wish you congratulations as well. Now, the reason that I am mentioning these folks on this platform, I know that this is a widely listened to platform, is because I truly believe that we ought to celebrate our young people when they do well. I believe that that is very important, and I just wanted to extend my sincerest congratulations to them. If I can go back now and to send a note of condolence to my friend Margaret Williams. She was hitherto in St. Martin, but I think she now lives in the United States. And Margaret Williams would have lost her brother Stephen Williams. And I wanted to extend my condolences to her. I just got a note here to say, I'm sorry, forgive me. Margaret would have lost, no, what am I saying? Margaret would have lost her mom, forgive me. Please forgive me, Margaret. Her mom, I'm getting a little confused because of the note that I made to myself. So I'm confusing myself. Her mom is Natalie Williams Brown, who resided in Jamaica. And I want to extend my condolences to you, Margaret, on the loss of your mom. Of course, your brother, who was the prominent secretary who served with me for many years, Mr. Williams, that he would have, would have lost Mr. Williams some time before. I made a note to myself, but I read it wrongly. So Margaret, please forgive me. I'm extending condolences to you and your family on the loss of your mom, Natalie Williams Brown, who resided, I'm told, in Jamaica. Uh, Natalie was also the aunt-in-law and mother-in-law of our former colleague in government, Hazel Brandy Williams. And so I extend condolences to her as well. I'm told that the funeral service for Natalie Williams Brown is, go is set for Thursday, the 7th of March at noon, Church of the Firstborn, Brighton District, Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth in Jamaica. Let me also add that Cecil Farrell, my good friend Shark, that this wonderful woman Natalie Williams Brown that she was also his aunt-in-law and so I extend condolences to Cecil as well and to the entire family Margaret if you're listening my condolences to you on the loss of your mom Cecil the loss of your aunt-in-law and certainly uh, to all those who mourn I extend my deepest condolences to you and hope Margaret Cecil uh, Hazel and everybody else that the prayers of all of us will comfort you in your hour of bereavement and so for all who might be mourning please accept our prayers and accept our well wishes at this very difficult time for you ladies and gentlemen I am not going to tarry too long tonight in terms of my introduction I think that there are a number of things that are swirling and that the public would want to weigh in on I should tell you because I came here two weeks ago and I did announce on Valentine's Day that Dr. Patricia Bartlett has been asked to pay the monies that she owes me by the 28th day of February, and that is today. My lawyers have not at this point advised me that any monies were paid, and so I regrettably will have to now take whatever further action is available to enforce that decision, that judgment, and uh, to go back to the courts to do what I need to do to collect what is owed to me. Many people have reached out to me and have said to me, oh, you can forgive this. You ought not to proceed with it. It is just leave it alone. And, you know, sometimes, and the Bible tells us to turn the other cheek. But sometimes when you keep turning the other cheek, people keep slapping you. And I try as much as possible to fashion my life and not 
to trouble people, not to engage in a way that I do damage or harm to other people. I've always lived my life that way, despite what others may say. I know I sleep well at nights because I have never taken a decision that has been geared at using my authority to injure or harm anyone. And when you do that sometimes, people feel that they can walk on you. People feel that you will not take them on, you will turn the other cheek and so they must keep slapping you. And this time around I've said, I want my money. And so I intend to collect it because I believe it is a matter of principle. The attitude that some have to go around and malign people, to say all manner of evil against people, simply because they ain't get what they want. That is the only reason, you know. They did not get what they wanted. So they jumped into politics to try and get it that way. The people say, no, not you. They come back a second time, give me a chance again, the people say, no, not you. And so they rush to the court now to malign me and say all manner of things about me and take to social media and every platform to cuss me as if I have ever done anything to them. I have not. And so it gets to a point where people have to start to pay. And we have to start to say that actions have consequences. And while we should all try to turn the other cheek, it gets to a point where you say, you know what? This time around, your action will have the consequences. And the problem that we have in this island is a lot of people cheer you on. They encourage you, box him again, kick him again, slap him again. But when you get the one slap back now, they say, Lord, Lord, you could have given him a chance. That is our culture. I'm simply saying that today is the 14th day. The money should have been paid today. The lawyers have not advised me that anything was paid. So I'm going to instruct my lawyers to do what is necessary. And I'm going to keep the public informed. Because when people go after you in public, you should keep the public informed as to what's happening. And so I'll keep you informed. I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do with the money. But the money has to come. On principle, the money has to come. And then I will determine what I do with it. And I beg all them people who contacted me telling me that they're my long last cousin. And they love me a long time and they want some of the money when the money come. Listen, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to do it another way. But divisions are for the people in a car. A number of people reach out to me and say, Because you remember me? We don't even know who they be. But that is the nature of our people. And I know it's all in good fun. But serious matters sometimes need to be addressed in a serious way. And we need to get to a point in this island where even if we disagree with people, that we can be respectful and we can stop the efforts to malign people and call them all kind of names and say all kind of things to try and dirty their character when we have not one shred of evidence that that is so. I was very surprised to learn in 2012 that all of a sudden I'm stealing elections. Me. The only person on record who has gone to court to fight for the sanctity of our democracy. I went to court on that and won. 2011. The only team that has ever been found guilty of trying to thief elections in Nevis is the NRP. And yet they come and they now take up the cudgel against me to say that somehow I am trying to steal some election and malign my name. Well, it's time come now to pay the piper. And it's as simple as that. The money has to be paid. No ifs, ands, buts, or maybes. No two ways about it. There's only one way about it. The money has to be paid. So, I will leave that there. The lawyers will have to do their job. And I'm telling them to take it where it needs to go. And leave no stone unturned to ensure that that money is paid. And I'm going to come back and I will tell you what happens and how that development goes. In relation to the appointment to the Integrity in Public Life Commission, as you know, there has been no ends of difficulty in getting the opposition members to appoint someone to that commission. I made a report last week and I realized that there has been some noise out there in the public space. I don't know why it is people feel that as Premier of Nevis I ought not to know what is happening in the country. I am the Premier of the island. 
And so I'm aware that different options have been given, and that is not what the law prescribes. The law prescribes that the two members of the opposition should agree on a nominee. Well, that has certainly not been the case. And uh, we have now had, I believe, three different names being advanced. No consensus. In fact, based on what I've seen, there's been no discussion between the two members opposite on this issue. And so the Honorable Cleone Stapleton Simmons, she has written to say one thing. The Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge has written to say something else. And it looks like this is the Jews and the Gentiles that they're not at all engaging with each other. And so under the legislation, if that is the case, then the pendulum swings back to the Premier to make an appointment. And I will have to do what the law requires me to do so that the commission can be constituted and that it can function. I want to make it clear to the people of Nevis that the architecture of this legislation was established so that the opposition will have a say in the selection of the Integrity Commission. But if the opposition refuses to put aside whatever personal issues there may be, and to come together to appoint someone, then I have no choice as the Premier of this island to ensure that the institutions of government function and that they function for the purpose for which they were designed. And integrity in public life is something that I championed. It is a bill that I operationalize. It's a commission that my government created a budget for and put its weight behind. And we have been very proud to say that in Nevis we've been filing for the last four years our, our statements of assets and liabilities as the case may be with that integrity commission. It is a record that we are proud of because we did it even before our sister St. Kitts did it, we did it over here. And I do not believe that we should allow that to be derailed because of infighting on the opposition benches. And so I want to make it pellucid that the pendulum has now swung back to the Premier to appoint someone because the two members of the opposition cannot agree and cannot bring themselves to speak to each other for purposes of appointing someone. We talk about country about self. We say all the time that we want to create an environment where we elevate our country above ourselves. But here, we have two elected members who cannot speak to each other to come to an agreement as to a nominee for the Integrity in Public Life Commission. And I will just say them on that because the irony of it is that every release that comes out from the NRP, they blame me. They say somehow that I am to blame for the fact that they refuse to agree on a nominee, that they can't get their house in order, that they have failed to appoint a leader of the opposition, that they have failed to appoint an opposition senator, that they have now failed to appoint a member to the Integrity and Public Life Commission. Well, how is any of that my responsibility? The people of St. James voted. The people of St. Thomas is voted. They must have voted with the expectation that their representatives will function in a particular way. Now, I don't know what has happened inside the NRP. That is not my concern. It is not my party. But surely, the people of Nevis must now start to see the disaster that is the Nevis Reformation Party and the disaster and the failure of leadership within that party. That you have a party that goes out and wins 40% of the seats on offer in an election and immediately having won 40% of it, they gave back 20. Immediately having won two seats, they threw away one. Expelled a member for Nevis 5, St. Thomas's. And tell the people of St. Thomas's, listen, you all vote gone for naught because we trush you out. Nobody willing to compromise. Nobody willing to sit down. No sense of peace. We look around the world, you know, and we see conflicts. We see Israel and Gaza. 
we see Russia and Ukraine. And nobody is able to say, listen, press pause. Let's step back. Let's have a conversation. Let's see whether we can end all this bloodshed and loss of life. Let's see if we can end all this strife. And in a very similar way here, you have now the representative from St. Thomas's and the representative from St. James. Unable, incapable of saying, let us step back. However we feel about each other, and that is not my business. Let us remember that we serve constituents, we serve constituencies that people voted for us. And let us work together to ensure that there's a leader of the opposition, that there's a senator appointed on the opposite benches, that there's somebody appointed to the IPL, Integrity and Public Life Commission. And when they fail to do so, somehow, the narrative emerges that is Mark Brantley's fault. Is me, is me mash them up, is me mash up an RP? How oh, I get so powerful? There is a failure of leadership and an unwillingness to compromise, to enter into discussion that will lead to a result which elevates country above self and so I'm here tonight to say I am not willing to accept any blame because I had nothing to do with the breakdown and if there is now that tension and that difficulty and that unwillingness to engage with each other what does that have to do with me or with my party I will tell you that the CCM is stronger than ever we're together we're united you don't hear us going out there engaging in that type of behavior. And I keep saying to the people of Nevis, on the 12th of December, 2022, a lot of people are running around here saying they want to change and get rid of them. Because recall, the NRP did not even bother to publish a manifesto. The level of respect of the NRP for the electorate in Nevis was such that they did not even bother to give you a blueprint to tell you what they will do if they get into government. All they kept running around telling you, get rid of them, get rid of them, time up for them. And rather than an election of ideas, they had an election of slogans. That's what they engaged in. Well, some people fell for it and voted for them. Thankfully, the CCM still won the popular vote and the CCM still won the majority of seats. And so we formed the government again. But I say to people, when you look at what immediately happened, you realize how we dodged the bullet here in Nevis? How we came very close to having a dysfunctional government? A leader who cannot lead? No experience? In fact, the only experience we know this leader has was the catastrophe in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands where she was head of the Coastal Zone Management Unit and in her words members of her team went to prison for white collar crime she has not yet explained what she knew when she knew how she knew she has not explained how come she happened to be in Nevis when the FBI swooped down to grab up everybody else in St. Thomas. She has not explained why she resigned her position from Nevis while colleagues of hers in St. Thomas gone to jail. None of that has ever been explained to us. In fact, people got upset with me that I asked the question. I say, oh, well, when you present yourself and say you want to lead this island, those are legitimate questions to ask. So that, as far as I know, is the only leadership role that the leader of the NRP has had prior to coming to public life. And we still don't know what happened in St. Thomas. We only have questions but no answers because nobody has demanded of the leader of the NRP that she explains how it is, this unit that she managed, so many people end up in jail. No explanation to us. And so the track record of leadership is not a good one. Because we have some question marks surrounding that leadership at the Coastal Zone Management Unit in the U.S. Virgin Islands. She come to Nevis 
is unknown, not involved in anything for 20 years, and then kinikiat over. So machinations from St. Kitts using some people here in Nevis and uh, poof, she becomes a leader of the NRP. Funded from St. Kitts, controlled from St. Kitts. You know, I laughed the other day. Somebody in St. Kitts tell me, oh, they think we're stupid, you think we did not see when they came and went to the office in Port Zante. And I just smiled. I just smiled. Because a lot of things you all feel happen in the dark will come to light. And so, that is what happened. Born, created from Sinkits, funded from Sinkits, put there. Why? To come at Mark Brantley and the CCM. But through the grace of God, here we stand. Still strong, still firm, and still having the confidence of the people of Nevis. But the track record of leadership was non-existent. Non-existent. When I became Premier in 2017, I had served for 11 years prior to that under Vance Emery. Seeing how he functioned. Prior to that, I was a protege of Dr. Simeon Daniel. Seeing how he functioned. I was able to lead a successful law practice. Nobody in my law practice ever went to prison for white collar crime. Expanded it to the largest law firm in St. Kitts and Nevis. Track record of leadership that people can see for themselves. So when I became Premier, I knew how to deal with people. I knew how to talk to people. I knew how to engage with people. I knew how to get things done. I knew how to compromise. I knew how to keep the peace. The leader of the NRP come poof out of nowhere. And imagine she come poof out of nowhere. She ends up kicking out Cleon Stapleton Simmons, who was there before her. Who at one point was the only elected member of NRP, holding the torch for NRP in the house. But the newcomer kick out. <laughs> you know, I don't want to laugh, but it is funny sometimes. The newcomer kick out the old timer. And the whole thing in tatters. It's the only party where you have an incumbent sitting in a seat in St. Thomas's, And you already declare who your candidate is going to be. And I see some youngster running around saying that he is the new candidate for the NRP. In the seat that NRP won on the 12th of December 2022. I can't make this stuff up. And so, I go back to the point, we dodge a bullet. Because could you imagine if these people were in government and you had this level of dysfunction? Who ain't talking to who? Who ain't satisfied with what? Who ain't supporting who? Could you imagine what would have happened here in Nevis? Imagine that for a moment and think about it for a moment. The hand of God was upon us in 2022. And I pray that he keeps his hand upon this island and upon us so that we can stay on a steady course. Not this erratic behavior with untried and untested people. We don't even know where they're from or what they're about because there's so many questions that remain unanswered. So many. But I will leave that for now. Just to say that the pendulum has shifted back and I will now have to exercise my authority under the IPL legislation to recommend the appointment of the third commissioner. And I'm talking this way because I'm reluctant to do so. If I can leave the studio tonight and go home and see an email jointly from the two members saying, this is our choice, it would be a great day for me. That is what is supposed to happen. But if they refuse, what am I to do? And how then you refuse to do your duty and turn around and blame me? How? Have I refused to do my duty? No. I have already nominated somebody. Has the governor, deputy governor general refused to her do her duty? No. She has already appointed somebody. 
the commission is not constituted because of the opposition failing and or refusing to do what they're supposed to do. So that is where we are in relation to that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had reports last night of another homicide on our sister island of St. Kitts. I believe that people are now tired of hearing me talk about the matter, but I again appeal to our people, especially our young people. This propensity for violence, to use guns and other means to kill your brother and to kill your sister, that we need to get past it. No government can touch your heart or your mind and tell you what to do and what to think. We are told in some quarters that man is inherently bad and wicked. But we also know that we all have a choice. And that God, who made us in his own image, has given us the ability to choose. You're walking down, you can go left or you can go right. You have that ability to choose. And tonight I'm urging yet again our people to choose life. To choose to do what is right. To put aside some of the petty differences that are fomented in your minds and lead you to commit violent crime. The senseless murder of your brother, your sister, makes no sense. It is senseless. That means it makes no sense. And we continue down this road of tit for tat, butter for fat, retribution. You, match my, you mash my car and I go mash yours harder. It has given the country a terrible reputation. And it is playing itself out with deadly consequences for the people of the country. I am urging, urging the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, and especially the young people, because those are the people disproportionately who are dying, you know. And disproportionately when they get catched, those are the ones going being sent to jail for 20 and 25 years, which basically is a life sentence. Because if you're 25 or 28 years old and you get sentenced to 25 years, you realize that you have no opportunity to see your children grow up if you have children. You have no opportunity to be in their lives. You have no opportunity to do anything but to be in a cell. I wonder if sometimes our young people, particularly our young men, that they think, when I go out to do this act of violence, I, one, become a target for acts of violence myself. Two, I can be caught by the police and get sent to prison. Could you imagine being in a cage for 25 years of your life? Is it worth it? And I just feel that our young people need to start to choose life. St. Kitts and Nevis is full of opportunity. I am not saying that it's easy for everyone. Because nowhere in the world is it easy for everyone. But it is full of opportunity. The people who are pouring into St. Kitts and Nevis from our Caribbean neighbors, our brothers and sisters who are coming. You know what they're coming for? They're looking for opportunity. People don't go where things are hard. People go where they see some light, some opportunity. That's why we went to America. That's why we went BVI and USVI and St. Martin. We went to look for opportunity because those places were booming. Things were happening there. People are now coming to Nevis because they see Sinkets and Nevis as booming. They're going to Sinkets, they're coming to Nevis. And our own people who are here are refusing to step up, refusing to take the bull by the horn, refusing to grab the opportunities. You know, they say a few things come not back. And one of the things that comes not back is the lost opportunity. The lost opportunity. Too many of us are losing out because we are focusing on foolishness. How can I go down the road to kill a man? How does that advance you? And then when you get catch, remember I said so earlier, you know, you start to ball out. Pour me, pour me, pour me. Save me, save me, save me. 
I am saying, let us change hearts and minds. And it's not only the responsibility of the government. It is not only the responsibility of the church. It is all of us' responsibility. Because a lot of us see foolishness. And we don't see. You see somebody breaking into your neighbor's house. You know what you say? Well, in my house. But when they come and break into yours, what happened? Would you like your neighbor to say something? When you saw them break into your neighbor's house and you got nothing to say? We must start to reassess how we live with each other. To take care of each other, to be a community again. And to say to those bent on criminality that there's no room in our society for you. Nobody going to cuddle you, nobody going to dap you and say big up. Because there's no room here for you. And you must change your ways. And you hear what they say? Choose life. Choose life and choose it most abundantly. Life. To live, to work, to prosper, to see your families grow up. That is what you must choose. Some of you are rushing to choose death and jail. How you could be out here? You have the opportunity to go to the beach on Sunday. Go down by sunshine. Have a killer bee. Go down on the strip. Hang out. Go and play some cricket in the park. Some basketball. Some tennis. Some football. Go to the movies. With your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Travel. You have all of these things. And you're going to choose to go. Spend 25 years in a box. In a cell. With bars. That's what you're going to choose to do. When you have all this out here. That you could be doing. I know we can do better. And I'm encouraging us to do better. I'm encouraging all of us to speak with one voice. Not to start the blame game and the cussing. Because that doesn't take us anywhere. The more we blame somebody for crime. Two days, three days, two weeks, three weeks later. More crime. Let us instead of using our energy that way. Use our energy to suggest solutions and to come together. I have said it on a few occasions and I say it now publicly again. My advice to the Honorable Prime Minister as Minister of National Security is that he must build a broad-based coalition on the issue of crime, including members of the opposition, the church, community leaders, other stakeholders. Crime is not just a national security issue. Meaning, just an issue for the police. Crime is a societal issue. And members of the community must be invited to be part of the solution. Because crime happens in the community. The people committing the crime is our children, you know. And the people getting killed is our children too. We must find a way to involve a broad-based coalition. And whether you want to call it a coalition of the willing. But I believe that in this country there is a deep reservoir of patriotism, a deep reservoir of national pride. And I believe that people would be willing to step forward and to contribute ideas and energy to solving this problem. That has been my consistent advice to the Honorable Prime Minister. People who don't want to participate and prefer to stay on the fringes and criticize and attack and blame, leave them. Because they're not getting back into government anyway, so you don't need to worry about them. Focus on people who are prepared to come together for the betterment of the country. I go back to what I said, country above self. It shouldn't just be a little slogan that we trot out. We should believe it. We should work towards it. It is aspirational in many ways, but it should inform our thinking. And so certainly, I look forward to that. Now, my last note for the evening is on... The elections in Jamaica, which I found quite interesting. Uh, local government elections in Jamaica. The reason I found it interesting is that, of course, the ruling party in Jamaica is the Jamaica Labour Party, headed by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. And uh, we had the opposition, the People's National Party, headed by Mark Golden, uh, coming up against the Andrew Holness administration. JLP and PNP fighting in the local elections. They decided that they would make this a referendum on the national government and both party leaders were out in force 
for local government elections. Well, I was following it on the election night. It was Monday the 26th. And uh, I went to bed with the election having been announced that the PNP were the winners of the local government elections. I wake up Tuesday morning to check and they said, sorry, the JLP is the winner of the local government elections. And it, I don't mean to laugh, but it was quite funny because we had major news media having to retract statements that they would have made the night before. It turns out, I think, that the, the spoils have been shared in Jamaica. And that, interestingly enough, a lot of the uh, local councils were split 50-50. So if there were 17 seats, for example, I'm sorry, if there were 34 seats, 17, 17. Six seats, 3-3. Three, three. Quite a few of them were even Stevens. And then you had a situation where the others were quite narrowly determined. I find it interesting because it means that obviously the two parties are neck and neck in Jamaica. But what I also found interesting, and I will end here, because I know we have Jamaican listeners and many of our Jamaican brothers and sisters live here. But what I found interesting is that the turnout for the elections was only, the last number I saw was 29 point something percent. So it was less than 30 percent turnout. It means, therefore, that 70 percent of those eligible to vote in Jamaica did not vote. And when you add that 70% who did not vote to the rest of the people who are not even registered to vote, you realize that all you have is a tiny sliver of the Jamaican population which is voting in elections in Jamaica. Now that is an interesting phenomenon. And it really makes you wonder, can you say that you have a democracy if only 29% of your people are participating? Will the other 70% who did not participate, who say they see no reason to participate, will they say that you are legitimate in government and that they respect the government as the government of the country? When a lopsided majority of the country is not participating at all? I think it's rather interesting. And I saw an article written by my friend Lisa Hanna in the Jamaica newspaper, The Observer, I think, today which I thought was quite interesting because she said she went to the salon to do her nails and she used it as an opportunity to listen to the ladies who work there, the people who work there. And she was amazed that of all of them in the salon, she was the only one who was going to vote. She said, I think there were eight workers there and all of them said they're not voting. So that's an interesting phenomenon. And I hope and pray that here, We'll continue to exercise our franchise. Whoever you decide to vote for, that is your right. But exercise that franchise. It came at a high price for our forefathers. That's my soliloquy. The lines are now open, 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. And those are the numbers to call if you want to be a part of the show. Let's go straight to the phones and say good evening. You're on the mark. Good evening, Miss Sherry. Good evening, my dear. How are you? I am well, thank you. Good to hear your voice. Psalm 84, verse 10 and 11. For a day in the court is better than a thousand. I have rather be a housekeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tenant of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good things will he will hold. From them that walk it uprightly. Michelle, may God continue to bless you. No forget me with the money, you know. So no know what you do. Cutie has such a big love everybody here. So no forget. <laughs> All right, cutie. We love you. Happy to hear you. I love you too. Thank you for the scripture as always. All right. That is always, uh, well, not always, but 90% of the time she's my first caller. Always with a scripture of her choosing. And so I thank her for that. And continue to thank her and others for being a part of the show. The lines are open, 869-469-1616 and 869-469-1700. And we go straight back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, good evening to you. Oh, hi, good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Yes, um, quite a while I haven't called into this show. Yes, it's good to hear your voice. How are things with you? Well, I'm doing excellent. Um, I wish... <laughs> 
that I could have said the same thing in reference to our, our country. Yes. But um, before I get into that, um, I just want to also say, because you would have mentioned in reference to the the, the person who we would have lost um, last night, uh, you know, just recently, yes. in terms of crime, that that's something that I probably will touch on. Um, I want to deal with, with two 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 matters, but um, before I get into that, you also mentioned in reference to the full season, um, which definitely play a major um, role in terms of the contribution it, may, it makes to the economy, especially on Nevis, but, but, but by extension, the Federation of Think It's a Nevis. And I had an opportunity to actually work at that, that institution many years ago. Oh, but, wow. um, okay. Um, decided not to because I, I didn't really want to come over to Nevis at that time. Um, I guess if I had made that decision, who knows, I probably could have been the, the manager uh, of that hotel today. But I had an excellent um, career in the tourism industry, um, tremendous amount of benefits. And, um, you know, when I look back for all those achievements, I am extremely, extremely proud. And for the folks who continue to serve in which I consider the leading industry in the world, we have to commend them. And you also mentioned in reference to people who were promoted, and um, we congratulate them and we encourage them to continue to give quality because only quality service is what counts and what is important. You have to give your best, and that is what matters most, you know? So let me share my sympathy. Let me wish anybody, if they're listening, happy birthday. Hope that they will make the best of the rest of the evening if they're celebrating an anniversary. This is a very important occasion in their life, and hope that they will also make the very best of that um, opportunity. It's also sports time, which is a very important thing in our country and throughout the world because sports is very, very important, and this is something that young people definitely should get themselves um, engaged in because you can benefit lifetime in terms of income, in terms of opportunities, advancement, development because of, of sports. There are so many different sports around the world where you would have seen people achieved and excelled and benefited, as I said, in terms of um, being involved in sports. This is what we ask the young people to take opportunity, take take up the opportunity and get themselves involved in. Also, the debating competition, which I believe that sometime in the past you perhaps would have taken part of representing your island. Yes. And um, I think that's supposed to start tomorrow. So we wish, you know, those who are taking part in all the countries the very best and you know we are rooting for our country which is which are these two little islands one federation um and we hope that whether it's over in St. Kitts or in Nevis we then definitely would be on the winning side I know yes we who are, who are based in St. Kitts will definitely like St. Kitts to take the, the trophy um and those who are in Nevis but we all are one and we hope at the end of it that the the, the championship remain um, in think it's a Nevis. Before I move on, let me ask you, Mark, because this is something very important when it comes to dieting. Um, I know some of my friends are giving me update in terms of sweet potato. It is something that I love to death, and um, something that is very very beneficial to to us in terms of um, eating. Um, what are the position? in terms of sweet potatoes on the island. Is it, 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 it really available because I, it has been a bit scarce. On Nevis? Um, the pardon? So you're asking about sweet potatoes on Nevis? Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I can't answer that. I'm hoping the Minister of Agriculture in Nevis, Eric Evelyn, is listening. Maybe he can call and answer. But I have had no report, so I can't answer. Oh, okay, okay. Because it, it, it is something. I eat sweet potato at least six times a week. What? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. It is something that I, I love. It has tremendous amount of benefit. Um, it helps to save your eyesight. Sweet potato helps to lift your mood. It helps to protect your heart. I mean, 
you know, when when we eat Mark, officially every single time you consume food, you do a H to your body. Mm-hmm. And the H is either you heal your body or you harm your body. Is either you make is either you help your body or you hurt your body. There's no two ways about that. And the majority unfortunately of this food that tastes good is what is not good. And there are a lot of things we consume are what we were not born to eat. So that is something that I will leave the diet in for another time because I want to get into two matters that I really want to touch on. Alright, well if you can touch on them quickly, we have okay. some other people who hold This is, this is so in, in, in reference to the increase in the, um, the double salary, I'm sorry, increase in the salary for the for the government yes. and also in terms of crime. Okay, let me touch a little on the crime because people don't understand every single time we have a crime, that is a loss. And every loss comes with a cost. Mm-hmm. The nation, tremendous amount of resources that it affect the country every single time. Not only that the person gone, because in life there are two things. You can either die too soon or you can live too long. And when you cut down in the prime of your life, you have gone too soon. And that leaves a serious burden on those who are left behind. Then also is in terms of the cost to the nation. Because resources you got to pull out. People sometimes, doctors you have to call. People to go in to do emergency operation because they probably may not die on the spot. I mean, all kind of resources, unfortunately, that the country got to meet, that could be used in terms of doing other resources in education, in healthcare, in all kind of different things, in services that the country really need. So I will appeal to these young people, anybody who involved in crime, crime don't pay. You either end up in the hospital, in the prison, or in the cemetery. And those are not places that you really, 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 really want to, to, to end up because you now have an opportunity, as you said, the only right, I would have said it on this program, the only right a man has a right to do is what is right. So let me deal with now in terms of the double salary. I'm sorry, in terms of the increase in salary. I definitely, honestly, do not agree with this salary with this government. You have the Attorney General going from station to station, um, talking about and giving reasons why it should be an increase. But if you, I'm talking about from since 2005, this is supposed to be increased. But you just just get into government less than two years. You're not in government since 2005. So I don't understand why the government today, its ministers, the government is talking about taking an increase with the timing. The economy, I'm telling you, Mark, there are people in the country who are unfortunately suffering, suffering. Businesses are closing. Let me ask people, you, call, call, let me ask you a question because we, we don't have all night. Mm-hmm. Do you think in the context of Sinkits and Nevis that there will be any timing that is deemed the right timing for a salary increase for parliamentarians? And just be honest with me. Because I've been listening to this debate back and forth. I have not had much to say because the, <laughs> the Salary Review Commission and the report was since, I believe, 2019. And I know that the salaries were not implemented because of the same issue about timing. And so the question that I ask myself, is there any timing that people would find? I hear people saying, oh, Judem should have waited until their next term. Oh, um, they should wait until the economy is this. Oh, they should wait. Oh, there are poor people in the country. Well, there are poor people in every country. That's the reality. You got to, you, If you read your Bible, as I try to do, there are poor people in the Bible. So I'm asking that question. I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm asking a legitimate question. Do you feel, sir, that any time would have been the right time? Because the impression, impression that I am getting from listening to the debate is once it's talking about pay 
for parliamentarians, then the public is opposed to it. And that's okay. Well, let the public come out and say, parliamentarians should not be paid above a certain level. And if that is the conclusion, then that is the conclusion of the public. And so people know that, listen, this is going to be the situation if you become a parliamentarian. But this argument about this is not the right time, the economy isn't doing the best, the St. Stephen's economy is outperforming every other economy in the Eastern Caribbean. It has been doing so for years. So what would you say is the right timing? I'm curious about that. Well, I can say, Mark, you yes. asked a very important question, and every single citizen in this country do have that right to ask this question. When it comes to timing, there's something called time and timing. And it's always maybe because you will ask the right, what is the right time? When is the right time? You considered, I mean, but the right time may not be the time maybe when you just wake up. It might be a little better to do something a little later than to do it now. But you will ask how late, how much later? Whether it's three hours later, six hours later, and it might be better for six hours later than three hours later. I am saying that at this present moment, at this present moment, the economy actually was a lot better before the government change. It was a lot better. And there are certain things I will get into over time. Because I am underground. The people are crying out every single day. If we have to have a survey right now on this program tonight, say perhaps the first hundred calls, whether the government should take the increase now, I will tell you at least 90% will said no. If the people of this country had to call into this program and you get a thousand calls, I will say at least 900 in terms of asking what is the status, how they are feeling about the economy. And many of them, many of mm. them would say no. But Carla, I will suggest to you, and this is the point I'm trying to get to, that if you had the same survey a year from now, two years from now, if you had it last year, if you had it two years ago, the, the response will be the same. No, I am. No. I am. I am telling you. You're giving me your view. I'm sharing my view with you. Right, but right. Once that, you that, talk that about, once you talk me. about, Carla, once you talk about pay for politicians, mm -hmm. the public says no. The public gets upset. That's why Unity did not implement it. Timothy Harris had the report. Is he who asked for it? But he was but afraid. You, but you're talking about 2019, just about, just about. Um, around the time when we unfortunately the whole economy was locked down in 2020 it, and it, it, we, yes but I'm saying a, I'm we say had a situation yeah. where imagine in 2020 by 2021 because we are the only government in the world that paid four and six full double salaries never happened nowhere in the world and it was a situation where the economy was very, very strong. Even, even during a crisis, the government of the day paid a double salary. And then when the government changed in 2022, by August, by November the 22nd, the Prime Minister announced a double salary to the country. Not, we don't normally get double salary in, in November. But he announced it because the money was already allocated in the treasury to pay double salary. But he made the country look like if he put the money there. One year now after in 2023, the country waiting up until budget to this, for him to make an announcement in terms of double salary. He can announce in terms of, you had a whole year now. You made a decision a few months after in 2022. Normally, as I said, we don't pay double salary in, in November because the economy was good. You made a good economy. 
and because of the outstanding track record of the team unity government it was not a perfect government nowhere in the world not even the strongest economy the most powerful in nation america with over 300 million people america is perfect you have people who are unemployed in america you have people in terms of poverty in america you will have it everywhere the only place you will not have poverty unemployment crime and whatever is in um is in heaven but when it comes to the record of the labor government there are three things that they normally achieved high crime rate high unemployment and high cost of living not even that and all they can deal with and the, the government right now the ministers they don't have any confidence in the government that they are part of that's why they had to increase the salary they can even survive under the government that they that they manage i am saying that i believe i believe that this thing could have waited that is my personal belief right. because I have my, my right to have my view right. and because of time I will give just well, yes, somebody because a chance you, you, you've had a long run and, and we'll have to continue. make way for some other people okay okay all right thank so you very much caller I appreciate it and passionate as always I always enjoy your calls but and I'm happy you say this is your view but I'm asking a legitimate question because I, I find in the community we say we want the best leaders we want people who are honest. We want the bright people. We want the people who are capable. We have all these boxes we want to tick in our head for leaders. We want when our prime minister goes out there, he looks good, he speaks well, he could stand shoulder to shoulder with the rest of the world. We want a government that is performing, ministers who are delivering. But anytime you see pays mention, no, 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 no money for them, no money for them. So I asked that question legitimately as the right timing. That report was sometime in 2019. I admit I never saw it. No, not unusual in the unity government that we had. But that report was 2019. I know because the issue of salary increase kept coming up in the cabinet. And I'm not going to get into all what was said. But I know some were pushing. Some were ambivalent. The biggest concern the Prime Minister had was about what people going to say. That was the thing. Politics, what people going to say. But the report made the case that it made for the increases that were recommended. And the question remains, caller, what time would be a good time? Do you say, all right, in five years, in ten years, in twenty years? Do you say, well, if the economy reaches so-and-so, we still have the best economy in the OECS. So when people say the economy is this and the economy is that, look at people flooding into the country looking for opportunity. I am prepared to wager that no matter the time, the answer from the public would be what we are getting to know. That no parliamentarian should get no salary increase because that is the mindset. We have been told that people gone into government to fatten themselves. That is all they're interested in. And that is the mindset. So anytime there's something for the parliament, you know, remember, you know, if the Honorable Gart Wilkin, the Attorney General's representation was accurate, I didn't check it myself. He said from 2005 until now, that is 18 years, that public servants have got a total of 41 percent increase in pay over that time i know since i have been premier of nevis and since i've been in government let me correct that since i've been in government in nevis from 2013 that public servants in nevis from 2013 to 2022 got i'm sorry to 2024 forgive me got 25 percent salary increase and that is in addition to increments and everything else that they will get. There are some permanent secretaries now whose salary is greater than the salary of their minister. But yet nobody is willing to say, well, at least let us look at the question of pay for parliamentarians. Nobody wants to engage with it. Because anytime you mention it, 
it's a bad word. It's 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 and that is why it was never implemented on the unity. It wasn't about no poor people and we can so on about people and it was always about the politics. And I'm here saying so because I was there. Let's go back to the phones. Well, we missed that caller. Caller, please call back. 869-469-1616 and 1700. I, I, as I said, just feel that no time would be an acceptable time for our public when it comes to salary increase. I just saw the same thing in Jamaica unfold. Same problem in Jamaica. The result was that the, the Prime Minister there, government give themselves a salary increase and he said he ain't taking it because of the outcry. And there the percentage was quite ridiculous in terms of the, 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 the percentage increase. But I, I just feel that, as I said, there will be no good time. No good time. There's no time, I think, that somebody could say, oh, yeah, the public going to support. Because the public has an aversion to parliamentarians getting benefits because they have been taught, and it's our culture to say, that parliamentarians are in there fattening themselves. But at the same time, they demand from parliamentarians optimal performance. They demand that you go the extra mile. People say all the time, oh, you're in there, you're doing a job. I tell people I work seven days a week, 24 hours a day. My phone rings sometimes at the wee hours of the morning because if there's a problem in the community, I will get a call. That is how governments function. And that's what you sign up for. But whenever there's a question of your benefits or pay, the public say no, nothing for you. So a permanent secretary must make more than its minister. And that is okay. There should be no conversation about any increase in money. And so this thing about timing, I think, is a red herring caller. That's my view. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Good evening, Mr. Premier. Good evening to you. One question. Are there any plans to resurface the Rawlings Main Road in Gingerland? There are no plans on the table at the moment for the Rollins Main Road. Um, the, well, I don't even, you call the Rollins Main Road, from Market Shop going up? From Market Shop to the top, right? past Sambo Shop at the, the top. Okay. There was some work done on the, on, on the road adjoining that one, the road that connects with that one, at the very top. But yes, but that particular road is very, very bad. Right. So, caller, I, th there's no plan on the table at the moment for that road that is from market shop going up to sambo the other bit of the road at the top of rollins coming over from zetlands that was done and i believe yeah, that i realize that right but this one i'm speaking about is terrible right well and there are a lot of talks and murmurings so right. well i understand there's a lot of talk and murmuring all over you know why because everybody wants their roads done i know and i appreciate it and i am trying and the government is trying its best to get to them but we have roads in church ground we have roads up in rollins now you've mentioned we have roads over there in in um, fountain and westbury we have roads up there in brown pasture i drove on the brown pasture road there to go up to 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 persons who live up that area there and it's a riverbed we have up there in farms and all these people are agitating all at the same time saying the roads need to be done so we accept that and we appreciate it okay. but we have to try to do what we can when the resources afford us to do it so it is not on the table um rollins but i certainly will ask my team to have a look at it Please. um <coughs> to see what the condition is but as i said we did do the upper part thank you for your time sir you're most welcome thank you for the call as well and i encourage our uh, residents you know as this caller did when you have something you have a concern absolutely bring it to our attention bring it to the attention of your representative we are trying our best but the demand sometimes what they say they sometimes flow more than water water more than flow i'm not sure how the expression goes one or the other but sometimes it is difficult because there's so many demands especially now for roads you have some people going to a, a remote area of nevis build a house and after they build a house in a remote area they start to call the government every day i need a road to get to there so we are constantly trying to do our best caller and we will get there it's just a question of timing but that is not on the cars certainly for this year thus far let's go back to the phones good evening you're on the mark hello 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 yes you're on the ear hello on the mark caller please listen to your telephone you're on the mark go ahead caller 
Hello. Are you listening to your phone? Yeah. Yes. Well, you're on the air now, so go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Bradley. Yes. I want you to do one more, one thing in life. You listening to me? Yes, call. I'm listening to you. You're on the air. Everybody's listening to you. Go ahead. What I want you to do, right? Give up the leadership for, for CCM. And that will show us why. Can you make bam, bam, bam to the bam to the hospital? What do you mean, what happened to the hospital? Hello? Yes, what do you mean, what happened to the hospital? We may hear nothing about it. You may hear nothing about the hospital? Yes. I was there just yesterday, and the hospital is fine. The hospital finished? Well, the hospital was always finished. If you're talking about the expansion to the hospital, to the okay, well that that is not yet finished, but the hospital is finished. The hospital is working quite fine. So when you complete? Well, we're getting to that, and we will be making announcements in relation to that when we're ready to proceed with that. But I want to be very clear, caller, that the hospital is functional. It has the most equipment it has ever had. It has the most doctors it has ever had. The most equipment it has ever had. It has the most doctors it has ever had. Could you move away from your radio caller, please? Could you move away from your radio caller? Are you there, caller? Yeah, I am. All right. So I'm trying to say to you that we're doing an expansion, an extension to the hospital, but the existing hospital. But you don't know what time. Well, yes, I agree with you. I am not going to dispute that it has gone over time. But I want to make it very clear that medical care and health care in this country is the best that it has ever been. It hasn't suffered because the expansion is not yet finished. The existing hospital is working fine. We've added mammogram. We've added CT scan. We have more specialists at our hospital now. We have more doctors at, at, at work. We have two new ambulances. We have all of these facilities that we have provided. So what happened to the fire truck them? What do you mean what happened to them? Are you on the island? That's what you hear? Well, I have not heard that. But the fire trucks are a responsibility of the federal government. That is not our responsibility in Nevis. I don't buy fire trucks. That's a matter for national security. But I have not had any report that there are no fire trucks on Nevis. So I believe that that is inaccurate. You have another because point that you wish to raise? When I used to work in Nevis. Mm -hmm. And the one summary, that fire truck. I used to own your Newcastle Airport. Mm -hmm. Yes? Caller? Yes? You said that when you used to work that they had fire trucks. Well, I'm telling you, they still have fire trucks. So what, what is the point that you're making? Because I hear none in New York. Only, uh, I hear only one in New York. Oh, you're going from none to one now. What no, is it you, what is it you really hear? hearing? One, one, one. Oh, you're hearing one now? Yes. All right. Well, as far as I know, there's a fire truck at the airport, and there's a fire truck in Charleston. They had some issues in relation to fire trucks because they had a large tender that was down, and they were trying to get that repaired. But I'm told that the federal government is in the business of trying to find replacement fire trucks. There's why, currently... Why, there's why a current... Why, why, why knew it at the wait and the federal government to... To get a fire truck in New York. Because call it is the response. We can't remember the five minutes. She's telling our five million, five, five million dollar every month. Caller. Caller. Right. Caller. Sometimes when we want to make a call and we want to, because you started out by saying that CCM will be better off without me. Right? So it sounds to me like you're starting out trying to blame me for something. If you're going to do that, that's all right. But at least understand what you're talking about before you call into the radio. The federal government has responsibility for national security in the country. Fire, police, army, that's the federal government's responsibility. That is why it is for the federal government to buy fire trucks, not the NIA. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But why, what, what are you saying, right? Yes. That's why that the federal government when they come think it's where they don't put in for for fire truck in Nevis because bomb the forces. 
What do you mean what happened to Four Seasons? Four Seasons had, had, had a fire. Yes. We have fire. To come late. Carl, I don't know where you're getting your information from because the manager of the Four Seasons put out a comment, put out a no, statement. No, I, I don't work in me with. Well, I don't know. You can't be because you're coming with our kind of Nancy story. Oh. The, the, the general manager of Four in Seasons, the general manager of Four Seasons put out a statement and in his statement he praised, he praised the fire officers in Nevis. So how come you're now telling us that the fire thing was late and some story? Because with the news when it happened, and so you you were late? The, if I was late? No, I'm asking you, you were late? I had to throw water, a bucket of water. You throw a bucket? More, more than one bucket. Okay. All right, caller. Well, I'm, I'm happy that you were able to assist, okay? But I believe you're just, just supposed to give up. All right. Thanks a lot. I believe this was our light moment for the night because this caller hearing all kind of things and none of what you're hearing make any sense the general manager of the four scene put out a statement praising the fire <laughs> the fire officers for their help praising them for the fact that the fire was contained in fact if people know that area the four season that cotton fire is set up the gym and the pro shop are next to the spa and the spa was even touched a ferocious fire like that, the spa wasn't touched. And he praised and celebrated the fire officers. You're not going to call to tell me you throw a bucket of water. Well, thank the Lord you were there to throw a bucket. Let's go back to the phones and take some more calls. Good evening, you're on the mark. Let's go back to the phones and take some more calls. Good evening, you're on Call out, please, away from your radio and listen to your phone. You're on the air. Hello? Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Round two. I'm to social security people in the US. Why, 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 why are alone? Why are they taking out social security and not paying it to social security department? Call again. I don't know what you're speaking of. Oh, right. You know, but I have no idea what you're speaking of. That we are taking out and not and paying you it. And you went on the in your press conference, and you had attitude, and I don't like it. You don't like my attitude? No, because you said. Some people don't do double salary because when you're, you're in your party, you're going to rum shop, you see them drunk, you see them, no, they never go for a premium anyway. So I said, so you don't like the premier to tell the truth? So you really see people drinking rock, drinking when it's working time? So let me ask you, you, you seem to see everything else. You're the manager, so you throw a bucket of water down a four season? Yeah. Okay. So you don't see people out not working when they're supposed to be working? Man, no. You don't? Okay. Well, all right. Well, if you don't, then you don't. You see, in this country, I think some people want people to tell them what they want to hear, as opposed to telling the truth, right? When I speak, I speak because I am all over this island and all over this country. I remember when I used to work at, at, at Newcastle Airport. Mm. That them um, any international were doing the airport. When they were to come and talk with us. When they were. Mm -hmm. But you're di you, you are a different man to when they were. But I don't understand. I you're, wonder why. You are the same man as your brother? Eh? You are the same man as your brother? Yeah. Oh, you are? But I really tell you, you we come. Know how we talk and we do things we're supposed you, to do. You call in the radio station tonight with some Nancy story. I don't understand. The because Nancy I don't understand that you're going to tell me you are the same as your brother. You're the same as your neighbor. What, 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 you're the what, same. What were you said tonight? People are not the last same. Week last, last week you said you see money coming. Last week yeah, I said I see. You say sit down with you and he talk with your man after a question on the radio and you fail to answer him. Carla, listen, I really don't know what it is you're talking about, but with respect, I don't it's feel... Carla calling and ask about the double salary. Last week you say you see money coming. Because the attorney general not take talk things with the opposition leader and the, the, the cabinet. That's why he said all the way, Joe. The attorney general say talk things. Carla, listen, go back and... Look at this script again and come next time, but with accurate information. I when can't, I can't, I can't respond, call. I can't respond to falsehoods and things that you're making up. 
Because you say I say last week, I you say I say last week I see money coming. You don't have no interest in news people. Caller, that is a matter for New Visions. Not for you. The people of Nevis are who vote. You know we have a thing in Nevis called elections? Yeah, because you cheat the election too. So I cheat the election. So every election I cheat and so the people of Nevis don't have a say no, in they what they're doing. Alright, Carla, thank you very much. I believe you've got some radio time tonight. But as I said, please prepare yourself before you come on the air. This is a big show. It is widely listened to. And I don't know who you are, but people are listening. And I don't want you to walk down the road tomorrow and people ask you, why are you calling the radio station got your chippiness, right? Educate yourself so that you know what you're talking about. Because you keep calling in and making wild allegations which just make no sense, right? You are, are, are seeking to, 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 to attack. You're seeking to, to make some kind of political statement. But you're not making any sense. And you're, you're, you're using falsehoods to try and support that. You say, I say last week that I see money coming. What, what, what is that? What are you talking about? Because I have no idea what you're talking about in that regard. Matter of fact, I was here last week when? Not Wednesday? Last week Wednesday. When was Parliament? Wasn't it following day? Thursday. And I learned about the salary increase at the Parliament on Thursday. That's when the resolution, I found it on my desk when I went to Parliament. So how could I the day before be talking about icy money coming? And one thing I love about these shows, they recorded, you know. People can go back, they can go on YouTube, they can go on Facebook and listen to the show again. So again, if you're going to call in, I'd like the exchange, but please, try to educate yourself. You don't know why the federal government need to buy a fire truck when it's their responsibility. It means to me that you don't understand what is being talked about, but yet you're going to take up your phone and call in the radio station. So I'm just suggesting that it makes for better discussion when we are informed. And we can't inform ourselves if we're not prepared to listen and to learn. Let's go back to the phones and take some more calls. Good evening, you're on the mark. Good evening to you, Bradley. Good evening to you, my brother. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Good to hear your voice. Man, I tell you, man. You can't have people irritating you, so. But anyway, here's you. Premier Bradley. You're hearing me, right? Yes, man. I'm hearing you. Yeah. You know, in the 70s, right? I guess you didn't know this, Sam. But there's a Calypsonian in, I think it's named Pharaoh. I'm sure you know Socrates. Yes. I okay, heard of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is Socrates, brother. I, I don't know if Pharaoh died. But Pharaoh sang a song, beautiful Saint Christopher. And he said in 1492... It was beautiful too. But that was because he didn't have non skulls like you and you. You understand what I'm saying? Well, that was some hard word he showed you in that song. Yeah, <laughs> what, what he was saying is that the country was better off than. That is what he's saying because he didn't have certain people. Well, all I could say. If Pharaoh was still singing Calypso, he might have made the application to some people. No. Mm -hmm. Premier Bradley, you know about the salary for the parliamentarians. I think I have a few friends, right? And who is on the who is on minimum wage? And they told me that in recent time the minimum wage was risen, right? Yes, it was increased already, and it's increased further. I, I think in in June, I think it's going to go up some more. June last year? No, no, no. It was increased this year. This year? Yes. Well, what some people say about oh, people suffering, na 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 na, in relation to the increase for the parliamentarian, the minimum wage was was increased. So what if if parliamentarian wage increase? And how people could be suffering so bad if it's only in January. Because mainly, remember, the people who are suffering most is those on the minimum wage, right? And if their salary was increased, well, how is it they're saying that they're, they're suffering so? I don't understand. Some people, you know, 
It seems as though some people, if they don't back the government that is in place, everything is wrong. And, they hood, and the ones who they back, when they're in, everything is right. They're not trying to be objective at all. Some people may not like me because I'm telling you, even though I back a certain party and they're in government, and I, I feel they make a decision that, you know, I don't feel was the best for the country. I'll tell them, I'll tell them in a polite way, I don't think that was the right decision. So I don't want to some some people. And also, it just seemed to me like some people want you, Premier, to have a hostile relationship with the current government. For what? Premier, are you hearing me? I'm hearing you loud and clear, brother. You have to be careful with, with what some people say to you and, and, you know, I mean, you can listen to them, but you will make your decision. The, the, the country is one country, sink its and navies. You have a federal government in place. What some people want you to do, have a hostile relationship with the Prime Minister and with the, the government for what? That wouldn't benefit Nevis. You have to try as much as possible to work with the government in place. So some people want to suggest to you, oh, because the immunity is nothing now. Oh, you must cuss up the government and everything that the Prime Minister and, and, and they agree and don't they, you must go against it. Whether it it's good or bad. What's foolish is some people saying. Man, this song of Pharaoh sing is well, well in order. Good night. All right. Thank you for that caller. We're taking some more calls at 869-469-1616 and 1700. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. No, we've lost that caller. Please call back in. Uh, just to remind the callers that tomorrow we have my press conference, my monthly press conference that happens at 10 a.m. And we're asking you to tune in and to be a part of it. And this weekend, we have the acting master class that is being facilitated by actress, Nivision actress, Juliet Jeffers. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Good evening, Mr. Premier. How are you doing, good sir? Good evening. Good evening to you. Good. Um, earlier on, when you were speaking in your, your soliloquy, as you normally um, call it, um, you would have... Um, been speaking about some promotions at Four Seasons, right? And uh, I also want to congratulate the folks who have, would have received promotion at the Four Seasons Resort. I want to especially, especially, because I wasn't aware of this, congratulate my nephew, Dion Lake. A lot of people probably would not know, but Dion is my nephew. Mm. And he's a very quiet, humble, unassuming young man. And I really want to congratulate him highly on his promotion. I'm very proud of you, Diane. Continue to work well and continue to do what you have to do. I'm very, very proud of you, Diane. And all of these folks who have gotten promotion at Four Seasons, I heartily congratulate you. Um, the gentleman who would have called in from St. Kitts, I think his name is Maynard, he would have asked about sweet potato. Um, currently, we do not have any sweet potato on Evis, unfortunately. But I've been, I've been made, of, I've been told that we should be having sweet potatoes soon. Now, of course, we know that um, Easter is around the corner, and wherever sweet potato normally spring from for Easter, they always come. And of course, I've been also been assured that we will have sweet potato power Agri Expo, which is on Thursday the 21st and Friday the 22nd of March. So, Mr. Maynard, if you want sweet potato. Come to Nevis on the Thursday, the 21st, and Friday, the 22nd of March, and you sh I'm sure you'll be able to get sweet potato at our Agri Expo. And while I'm on the Agri Expo, Mr. Premier, I just want to remind persons who normally vend at the Expo, persons who normally register, that the registration closes next on Friday, the 8th of March. And the reason why I'm saying this, because... Mr. Premier, we as politicians are always put on the spot sometimes. Um, we have these notices going out early, and persons tend to wait until the last minute mm -hmm. when registration has closed, and then they will come to our office and say, well, listen, I didn't get in, and make a call, make a call for me. I want persons to normally vend at the Agri-Expo to please go and register at the Department of Agriculture Prospect. Registration closes on the 8th of March, Friday. And so I do not want anybody coming to my office after the 8th of March to say they have missed the date of registration and they want me to intervene. 
because of course we have to make sure that we have our proper layout and that is based on the registration that comes in. So I'm making this appeal once again. If you normally vend, whatever vending you normally do, whether it's for food, um, vegetables, ornamentals, whatever you do, please go and register and registration ends on the 8th of March. I want to assure the public as, as well that we have a fantastic show again for you and so we're inviting you on the Thursday the 21st and Friday the 22nd. This year, it's a week early because on the last Friday of March is Good Friday. Of course, it's going to be held under the patronage of Hermine Valerie Hendrickson, our agro-processor. And of course, we are inviting all of St. Kitts and Nevis to come out in their numbers as they normally do. I understand that we're going to have lots of persons coming up from Stacia. As usual, they normally support us in their numbers. I understand that um, plans are on foot there for them to come up as usual. And you have any, you have any idea yet of numbers? Pardon me? you have any idea yet of numbers? We don't have any idea of the numbers as yet. I know last year we had the largest contingent ever of about 150. And it, from what I'm hearing, it may sound like that may be eclipsed this year. Wow. So we may be getting more than that this year. And I'm hopeful they're staying for the weekend, the, the two days this time, or just the well, one? Well, I, I remember when some of them were here last year, they did, they did indicate that they want to stay for the two days. We're not sure what will happen yet. But we really want to thank them for the overwhelming support that they have showed us over the years, and they're going to be back in their numbers again this year. The last thing quickly I wanted to just um, talk about was quickly about Culturama. Um, the registration open for a number of the shows, the um, June Eclipse the show, um, the um, parade, and so on. And we want persons to continue to register. Of course, we know that we have the full complement for our senior pageants. But those registrations that are still open, we're asking you to go into the secretariat, call or go online and make your registration because we know it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic culture armor 50. So, Mr. Premier, thank you very much for accommodating me. And I want to say once again, good night to all the lovely people in St. Kitts and Nevis and all who are listening online. Have a great Wednesday night. Thank you very much. That's the Honorable Deputy Premier, Eric Evelyn. Thank you, Eric. And I myself did not know that Dion was your family. So I learned something tonight. But you're right, very unassuming youngster, but clearly doing great things. And I'm very, very proud of him. Let's go back to the telephones and continue to take calls. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello, good night. Good evening. Good night, Mr. Senior. I would like to know if you like KFC or Domino's. If I like KFC or Domino's? Yes, because we already banned you from KFC, you know, because I don't like when that's for treating us, the workers, to commute every day. Uh huh. I don't tell them that like KFC, and I'm going to have to call Mr. Grant and say, Mr. Grant, whenever he sees Mr. Mac, that needs chance in the drive show. To, to pass it straight and close the window. <laughs> you think it's fear Let me hear that this. workers have to commute over every day, Mr. Brantley, uh -huh. and they are charging us five dollars, whether we part time, full time, or in between. Once we see that the communicating over every day, it is very unfair for us, Mr. Brantley. But I I thought that. NASPA had something in place for those who are working on some kids. That's what I was told. They, they see your commute over. Now they have something in place saying that you have to be full time. But what happened to those who got rehired at the hotels and the other businesses in, in Nevis and we come underneath on card? You think it's right for us? To be to be communicated but, over, but, but, and that's for want to charge us five dollars. Well, as, as we commute back and forth every day. So as I said, that should not happen. But is, for example, the employer, have they communicated the names to NASPA? Yes, they did. Okay. Well, if that is the case, I will look into that tomorrow morning, bright and early for you. Okay? Please do, because I don't tell them. I will call into the show tonight, because I know Mr. Bradley, like, he can't see. And so you're banning me from KFC? This man, if that's the case. You're banning me from KFC if I don't get this problem solved? I am sure will. Okay. Just one phone call away and we well, buy me out a cake well, for drive through. I want a piece of spicy crispy, so I'm going to make ah, sure to solve it. I here. like that. Thank okay. you so much. Right. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. But definitely, we had something in place. So, call. I think I agree with you. I'll speak to NASPA in the morning to find out what the position is and try to get that rectified, okay? And I do apologize for the inconvenience being caused. We recognize that more people in Nevis are going to sink us to work and vice versa. 
and so we need to accommodate them as much as possible. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Good night, sir. Good night to you. Um, calling from Trent. You're calling I'm from, I'm sorry? Disappointed. I'm very disappointed with the level of this debate that you know, you think that people need to step it up and this personal attack on politicians. Let's not have policies. It's system. Um, it, it is very disappointed to hear what level of the debate is being on the radio. I mean, let me tell you this now. I mean, who could that be in poor our nation? Tell me. And that's, that's point one. Number two, I want to continue my condemnation of our thinking government in light of what is happening in Gaza and the Israelis and the lack of empathy for the Palestinian people and the genocide that is going on. Dr. Joe, if you are anti Joe, and Dr. Douglas have a responsible morally to elect to stop the, 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 the relationships because they're not behaving in a moral in a moral way. Number three, I want to ask the Minister of Foreign Affairs why he's not recall, we returning my call. Six months now I'm trying to get in contact with him. He's not returning my call. But that that's no problem. I know what but, but I know who's in charge of, of the government behind the government. Number four, I want to make a call for the national unit. It is saying that we find a system that we can we can unite and do things to back together. And I'm going to draw an example. In 1635, France and England occupied Stenkis. They were there to great rival in Europe, but they started need to, to unite. And they united and occupied Stenkis. This is going to make 400 years since the British came. And we have not done nothing to reflect. I'm making a suggestion. I think that we should, for the, from August, the next year August, Get, we, we, we single out some important individuals and play murals about of, of them on the faces of the wall that are empty around things in the Navy. We want to hear about Yarmouth. We want to hear about Virgil Newell. We want to see the faces of Julian Nisbet. The Julian Greyhound. We want to see the faces all over. Even the, those from the, the, who work on the lighter boat, who sell mangoes. We need to see some of those people celebrated. It's 400 years. It's a time for us to, to reflect, not celebrate. Reflect on the journey, and then we could plan way forward. The divide and rule politics that we continue to work, it's not good. And it's, it won't build no future for our children. It is detaining us apart as Bamali say, and if we are not wise, if we continue down that, look, down that road, it'll co end up with violence, and it'll be this, this is all to orientation for the future of the country. We need unity. If America could unite, the, the economy of California is bigger than the whole Caribbean, but it's still a part of America. Why we can't unite and be federalized the Caribbean? We, our, economy, our economy is less than 100% of the global economy. What do we have? What, what do you feel? Our greatest means of getting power because it's uniting locally, regionally, and internationally we look across the Atlantic Ocean. I think that our people is missing the point, and that is because they've been led by this European divide and rule philosophy that I don't like, you can't cooperate. We have a, this, our country, our future is at stake if we don't cooperate. We cannot fo follow this divide and rule thing that we see continue. Here we have to put forward proposals that will bring everything cooperate all within the government. And finally, um, I, I'm very disappointed with some of the Christians that they, they, they do the they silence and and they silent in this, in this thing with this Gaza when they're supposed to be having a moral point of view about what's going on in Gaza. And they said before to criticize and call them locals. And they have no moral responsibility when it comes to global affairs. But I think that it's time for us to wake up and reach out and realize that, they, that we are one people. And if we don't unite, we're going to suffer. If time. Well, thank you very much, caller. I mean, you hold very strong views. I've always admired that about you. Once you call in, I know I'm going to get a, a, a very strong viewpoint expressed, which I think is genuinely held. I share your view about um, unity and getting together as a people. Um, we have tried it in the past. You would recall that we had a uh, federation, I think they call it, the West Indies Federation. I believe that was from 1958 to 1962. And uh, Jamaica broke away initially, then Trinidad, and then the whole thing collapsed. Um, I believe they attribute a famous comment to Eric Williams, saying one from ten leaves not. 
uh, meaning when Jamaica left that the whole thing collapsed. They then had a little eight, Barbados and the others, and that collapsed as well. And we went into independence on our own. Question is whether or not we can get together. CARICOM does provide a forum. In fact, even now as we speak, I believe that the leaders that were in Guyana um, having the CARICOM, annual CARICOM engagement. Uh, but whether or not we'll ever get there in terms of what you're proposing, I am unsure. As I said, we've tried it before. It didn't quite work. And perhaps what we need is small steps, meaning that we try to expand CARICOM, expand the integration movement, and to see where that takes us. But the idea of a political union in the Caribbean is one that is complex. Let me use that language. And perhaps would benefit from further public discussion on the matter. Let's go back to the phones again. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello. Hi, good night, Mr. Brantley. I'm late tonight. <laughs> yes, you're on. The show isn't <laughs> finished yet, so you're in time. Yes. I'm reading from Psalm 117, and I'm reading just two verses. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his, mercy, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise be the Lord. It's the end of the reading of the scripture. May God bless you and your family and the members of the whole government. Thank you, son. It's okay. God bless you. Much love to you all. Thank you so much, and God bless you as well. Thank We're you. taking your calls. We have just about eight minutes left, and we are going to take as many calls as we can get during this period of time. We have somebody holding. Let's go straight back. No, we've lost that caller. Let's try this one. No. Caller, could you call back in, please, 869-469-1616 or 1700. Those are the numbers to call. Gentle reminder again tomorrow, please join me for my monthly press conference at 10. And then on the weekend, we have our master, acting master class happening this weekend. We're going to have some good news rolling out for Nevis in the next uh, week, week and a half. We're definitely looking forward to the month of March because we think some good things are going to be happening there. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Greetings and love to you, brother. To me. How are you doing? I am well, thank you. It's time for life with the love of the Almighty. Blessing and peace in you. Humble and wise. And blessing night to your people in your vital service that you're providing for them. It is on the mark. I'd not say to follow up on the caller prayer before your last caller. And I think it's very vital that what he raised is something that need to imply and this formation that we see in when it comes to political unity and social equality for our people. Now some of the matters that we raise along the discussion is something that we need to take a gift with. And when we say that we mean in that the bickering and the the covetous stand that we see in facing our people because we have a lot of internal confusion because of who we align with self with. And then I said, I mean, without any fear or favor. Now, a lot of countries that we show a lot of respect to because we want to get some kind of leverage for support in funding and grants and them other things that based in the economy service that we apply with. This time now, we take a stand whether you give us uh, that kind of service or not. We're not supporting your, your, your inhumane damage to humanity like you say you're part of. And that's something we need to really grab with it. Because the generation that we feel to develop and bring into a better life and seeing that kind of formation by continuity. You know, you know, you know. I, I wish said that clearly. Mm -hmm. But I hope that we can able to bring some different discourse that we can change the magnitude of what we're facing up today. With these old dirty coils that we have seen and the format of wars and rumors of wars because of the political greed or economical power indicate to these same formation this time now you people take a different route because none of them really benefit in our people to the show that we need to develop. It was in ways about the, the slave movements within the four hundred years of our Europe, the European nation, the matters, and we have, we have to look at the reflection of our people who have tried to those times and able to maneuver the colonial powers by just being integrated within being who they are and not what 
the integrity of what the European people they want us to be. So we say we call on them kind of support to see our right within our community. All of us think it's and need it. So we can have a better history and fighting towards the younger generation. But the Premier, keep focused and continue loving the Creator because it's only He and deliver you out of our fears and perils. Blessed night to you. All right. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for your call and for your support of the show all these years. We have about five minutes. We can take a few more calls. 869-469-1616. 869-469-1700. Those are the numbers to call. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening. You're on the mark. Caller, please. You need to be away from the radio. Just call in, came into the April project and also the year turmoil. You know, call, I'm not hearing your talk. Can you speak a little louder? I just call in to find out about the April development and the year turmoil energy. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you very much, caller. Uh, I hope to say something on both tomorrow in my press conference. But what I will say is that the airport development is going well in terms of the designs. I believe that today the point cross on it, uh, the Honorable Alexis Jeffers indicated to us that we will resume the public consultations on it very shortly. And so we will have more to say on that when those consultations resume. Uh, the issue of geothermal, um, I was waiting for the end of this month because I'm advised that by the end of this month we should have a progress report. I don't have that yet, but as you know, we had a first round of bidding that did not succeed and we went back um, to the bidding process uh, to try and select a driller um, for the production wells. I would also wish to inform that, of course, we are trying to do this now as a national project, working with the federal government and St. Kitts, and I would have had the privilege of meeting with members from the Saudi Development Fund. Uh, we have asked Saudi Arabia for some assistance, financial assistance, to make this project possible. So I'll have, hopefully, some more to say about that tomorrow. Let's go back to the phones and take this last call. Caller, good evening. You have a minute. No, you're gone. See, I was about to give you two minutes to finish off the show. Um, we have two minutes left, and so we're taking, uh, probably can take one quick call as the final call, if there's somebody out there who has something to say. But I want to thank those who called, those who were participating in the show, all those who WhatsApped and messaged, those who are on the live. I want to thank you. This show is an important show because it gives people a voice, it gives people an opportunity. I continue to say, however, that we need, when we call in the show, to have our information correct. I don't mind people who disagree with me or disagree with the government. That is, in fact, welcomed. We live in a democracy. But I like when people come with facts and that they have the information. Other than that, we end up in a debate, really, which makes no sense because people don't know what it is they're discussing and what it is we're talking about so the banner struck up it means therefore that we are on the cusp of 10 o'clock and uh, we know the show comes to an end at 10 for all those who called i want to say how grateful i am for those who listen to those who are part of the show those who don't call and maybe don't comment but listen nevertheless thank you for being a part of the show we will continue to engage with you and uh, we will continue to have this discussion this debate as matters arise i ask our people to continue to love each other continue to be kind to each other to be your brother's helper your sister's keeper to look after each other let us build the kind of sink it's and evis that we want i wish you good night and that you have a blessed rest and that you rise tomorrow to see a new day if god wills it good evening have a good night and God bless you. The views and opinions expressed on the preceding program were solely those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Nevis broadcast.